Knife dope. More dope. Come and get your figs. What's up, fuckers? Your boy's back with a fresh batch of dope. Knife dope. That's right, people. The hits don't stop. Just a quick sneak peek at what's been going on behind the scenes here at Knife Dope Studios. This just touched down today. My um, my oldest son, who is uh, out there in Alaska, doing big things, he, uh, he sent this to me for Christmas and it just arrived today. So big thank you to my boy. Uh, Pop loves you. And as for the rest of you fuckers, I love y'all too. And I mean it. But you're going to have to uh, forgive me as we are going to have to set shit back up because uh, we are kind of a grassroots situation out here. And it takes a minute to get this uh, studio lights back up and running. But here I am for your viewing pleasure. Got a new batch of dope. Now, this one has been sitting here for, God, it feels like maybe a week, at least a week. Uh, this is from the Pass Around Group. This is from Mr. Miguel EDC. Great gentleman. He's uh, he's a new guy to the um, to the YouTube pass around group that I'm involved in. Uh, seems like a pleasant dude. I don't think I'm very familiar with his uh, content, but I advise you guys to go ahead and uh, give him a subscribe on his channel. Uh, but enough about that. Let's get to the dope. Okay, okay, okay. Today's unboxing knife is this one. The first ever Chavez in my collection. The one that started it all for me. The Chavez Tutu, or rather the Chavez Hrendenshion Street. <laughs> God, you got to forgive me, people. My finger is still fucked up, so it's a little bit tender. But um, yeah, this is a great one, man. Uh, this is what turned me on to the brand, and uh, this is what made me fall in love with it. I got this one riding on taco bearings, so it's buttery smooth action, official detent, true definition of a work knife. And so we're going to use this for the unboxing. But actually, I got another announcement to make. Oh, oh, oh my God. You see, bookkeeping department reached out to me today. Um, and we've got a problem, people. Well, I guess we can call it a problem. It is what it is. It's part of uh, my whole philosophy as far as doing it for the culture. You know, this channel has been a, um, it's just been a hobby of mine. And, it, it, you know, I don't foresee it ever being anything beyond that. Your guys' support has been fantastic. I never ask you fuckers for any money. I just did my first knife sale, but I have been um, authorized to to uh, to be monetized. I just have not started that process. Uh, my partner in crime, one half of the Blade Cartel, Duty Low, is has offered to help me set that shit up. So I will be doing that. But you know, back to the bookkeeping. I did a little bit of research today. I don't know why the fuck I did it, but I wanted to take. I was you know I was interesting interested in to see how much money I have spent on this hobby in 2023 on Sezzle alone. And I want to give also a big, uh, big shout out to the, 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 the hammer, Mr. Dave. Uh, Dave actually did the um, accounting for me as I read him off the totals. But we got a total on Sezzle alone for 2023. Your boy has spent... That it, that's right, people. That's not a goddamn typo. $15,788. Oh, my God. I don't know if I'm embarrassed, ashamed, or, or what the fuck. But, yeah. And that's just Sezzle. That's not counting any deals that I bought outright, uh, you know, purchases where you just pay for it 100% outright. That's not counting any other apps like Afterpay. This is strictly Sezzle. Sezzle's got a hold on me, people. All right. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. We've got one that came in from um, from this guy, Mr. Miguel. And the um, reason I pointed that out is I don't think I've ever heard many other channels talk about what they spend on this. You know, a lot of these, these bigger channels who have been in it longer or who have a bigger following, they get a lot of shit gifted to them. Your boy hasn't been that fortunate. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I, I have been uh, gifted a couple of times. I was gifted from from great people like Mr. Don, uh, Don Farmer, DNK Knives. 
I was gifted a knife from Asher Knife Company. I was gifted a knife from um, Austin at Traditional Pocket Knives. Great people who have done so much for me. Uh, being a small channel that I am, they still show their love. Uh, so let's see what we got coming in. I believe we should have... Yep, we do. We got a giant mouse. Now, I had... Um, this year was my first time ever actually even trying a giant mouse, and I ended up buying one. Uh, so we'll check that out in a minute. But this one is the the yacht, or the jot, or the yacht, something like that. I know it's a Danish word, and it means, um, it translates rather to hunting in Danish. That I know. If you guys aren't too familiar with the um, giant mouse ace line, this is uh, the brainchild of Mr. Uh, Jens Anzo and the legendary and I mean legendary, Jesper Voxnes. So here it is up close and personal. There are a couple different versions to this knife. Price point comes in at $215. Uh, the one we're looking at is in the black canvas micarta. Now, it's a little bit confusing on that because I think the website lists it as black linen, but then when you click on the specs, it's listed as black canvas micarta. Um, it is textured. Nice milling lines going on. It almost doesn't even feel like my Carta. It almost feels like G10, like a little, like a mixture of the two. Uh, but anyways, we've got a closed position coming in at 4.77. You've got two forms of deployment. You've got this uh, nice cutout as well as this uh, flipper tab. Now the jumping on that flipper tab is really smooth. So let's try that out. All right, not too bad. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with giant mouse's uh lock bar axis it has progressed um some of their models are are not good at all this is probably the best model as far as access that i've tried uh but still they uh for some reason you kind of got to go up at an angle to dis disengage their lock bars uh they do they do give you some nice jimping on it but it is also smooth just like the jimping on that flipper we've got a uh blade length coming in at 3.27 nice drop point blade with a nice bit of belly uh, this is their first knife that was geared towards like hunting, you know, hence the name yacht. So you got a, like I was mentioning, this nice bit of uh, belly here is going to be great for sweeping cuts. You know, uh, ergonomically, it feels fine in the hand. No complaints there. Uh, you do have a reversible uh, pocket clip. Oh, okay. I think the original one comes with a wire clip. I don't know if this is one that they're offering now. Uh, that might be the case. We've got a crowned brass backspacer with integrated lanyard hole for the weirdos. This is riding on cage washers, or I'm sorry, cage bearings. It almost feels like washers the way it rides. No, it's on bearings, I can tell. Uh, nice satin finish. We've got very minimal billboarding. We've got the Ace logo there on the clip side, and we've got a clean presentation on the show side. Oh, there we go. That's not bad, man. You know, I know a lot of people like this. Um, they talked about it being a good one it's okay it doesn't blow me away by any means we also got a nice crown spine there and then we've got this jimping that i don't understand why they why they do it why they put it down so far down that spine uh it seems like you'd have to have a, a, an enormous hand or i guess when you choke up like this maybe perhaps you put your thumb there i don't know uh, i would have preferred it to have been further down towards the base of the spine but it is what it is Weight on this comes in at 4.5 ounces, and these are made in Italy. You know, Italy's uh, craftsmanship has, has impressed me this year. I've had a couple of knives made in Italy, and um, they all seem well built. Now, let's go ahead and put up a couple of knives for some size comparison. Basically, a little bit of knife flexing. You know how the fuck we do. First up, American Vibes. Coming in with one of my Spyderco Shamans. This one is the Blade Ops exclusive, which has been heavily modded. So here you see that yacht is actually about the same size. Oh shit, wait a minute. The yacht's a little bit bigger than that shaman. God damn, I didn't know that. Next up, a recent acquisition. One that I'm absolutely in love with that I'm gonna have to figure out how to get more pocket time. And that is the Wii Roxy 3. That one is a Todd Knife and Tool collaboration. So there's those. Let's do a couple more, shall we? How about some Jesper Voxnes designs? I have a couple of them in the collection. First up is the legendary one, the one that started it all for me, the one that's got a cult following. Look at that action, people. We're talking about the Urban EDC F5.5, baby. So there's that. Then my only purchase from Giant Mouse ever, 
and it's a good one. We're looking at the Ace Nazca, carbon fiber version. And there you see that yacht is also bigger than both of those. Let's do a couple more, shall we? Actually, I'm lying to you. Two more, goddammit, two more. How about some uh, more Spyderco in your life? We're going to go with the Capara. This is one that has been sadly, sadly neglected by me. I, I shit you not, the pocket time has been minimal. Minimal, minimal. And it's a great design. I just, um, I just don't find, it just doesn't find my pocket. So there you see that. Last but certainly not least, another um, knife that was so nice I had to buy it twice. We're looking at the Vosteed Artist, formerly known as the Mayhem, the RS Chaos. And so there you see the yacht is actually smaller than both of these. So yeah, people, I threw a lot at you tonight. I gave you a behind the scenes look at a sneak peek rather on the new sign that I just got. That actually has some other, um, some other features that I just haven't uh, set up yet. I think it does like a bunch of flashing and colors. I literally unboxed it and wanted to share with y'all. So it's uh, fresh out the box. But then we talked about, we talked about the, um, the spending. The spending of this channel see therefore when i ask you fuckers for a like or a share or a comment i mean you see what i'm giving up i'm paying uh i'm paying big money just to go ahead and share my knives with y'all you know really i am but i enjoy it i love it you know don't know if i change it but we may have to start changing these spending habits i'm contemplating you know what i'm thinking i'm gonna start doing in 2023 or 2023 2024 is i'm gonna buy a knife and if I really don't anticipate keeping it around, I think I'll immediately sell it, you know, like, and not only that, if you see a knife, if you see me showcase a knife and you're, you're interested in it, holler, bro. I may not say I'm selling it, but fuck, just ask about it. And obviously I would sell, even though these are brand new knives that I'm, that I'm showcasing, I would still give you all a discount just to go ahead and get some of the funds back. I'm trying to keep the collection under a hundred. Um, I'm scared to count because I think I'm right around there, probably like around 85, 95, somewhere in that range. Uh, so my, you know, my goal as of right now is to not get over a hundred. Help me fucking maintain that, please. It's up to you fuckers now. Love you, mean it. Until the next time, cut something, cut someone, just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers.